Hello, 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 hello. Hello, everyone. Um, this is an impromptu uh, little video, live video here, real quick. Um, again, I don't know how long I'll stay on. Um, it's more just to get some info across. But if people sort of pop up and want to talk, I'll gladly talk with you. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you uh, to those of you who have uh, jumped on board the uh, Seavages fan film Frights Blu-ray that I um, recently put out. We only did 50 of them. And at this moment, uh, there are only three left. Three of the Seavage fan film frights. Uh, I am super happy with that. Uh, I didn't think they would do as well as they did. Um, I want to give you a little uh, background on what these are. So, folks, uh, you folks who don't know, um, but I mean, again, if you've come to this channel, you probably would know, but. I have been making um, low-budget <clears throat> comedy horror films for most of my life. I'm, I'm going to be 45 this year, uh, and um, I started low-budget pictures in 1991. So um, some of these releases that I've been putting out recently are of very old-school stuff, and a lot of the stuff people haven't seen ever. Um, but these, you know, so in the late eighties and then early nineties, you know, on to when I started low budget pictures, um, I was doing a lot of fan films, just, uh, backyard Freddie and Jason movies or whatever it was, you know, I mean, I know we did like, we did our own Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stuff. We did our own, uh, brain scan too. You know, things like that. We, we did a lot of dumb shit like that. And um, uh, two sort of popular in the underground VHS collecting worlds, um, two of the flicks I did in the 90s, Friday the 13th Halloween Night in 1994, and then From Almost Night Till Almost Day, which was a parody of From Dust Till Dawn in 96, uh, you know, they kind of grew like a... VHS cult following, <clears throat> um, and of course they star the original members of LBP, Low Budget Pictures. And so, um, along with uh, our good friend Zach Olivares, who has been uh, creating the uh, blue Blu rays uh, as of late, um, he did recently. Did, let's see. He did our blood trim and bloody giblets uh, from 93, uh, 1993 and 1994, uh, 2003 and 2004. Uh, LBP with a shit, shit bunch of extras. You know, I made it look like uh, the Criterion Collection type stuff, uh, which is really fun. With a bunch of awesome features on this, including the rarely seen short. Slumber Party Cheerleading Bukyaks Get Slaughtered, a word uh, that <laughs> barely anybody has seen, but it's a uh, special feature on this, along with new commentary and new interviews and whatnot. So Zach put that together. Um, and then our Warlock Home Video releases, the double feature of Happy Holidays and Dingleberries, which also has a whole bunch of new special features that we just did for this disc. Um, and it's Quite beautiful. Um, Zach also put together the Stoinky Saga Blu-ray, which is a, a Stoinky Beach, a Stoink Mare Before Christmas, and a Stoink Mare on Halloween Street. Um, three shorts uh, with extras for each short, uh, an audio commentary, and they're really dumb. They're really stupid. Shot on video crap to emulate uh, the 80s and early 90s shot on video crap. And then um, the 1999, 2000, 2001, uh, this is the Blu-ray release of the Anal Paprika Trilogy, Criterion style, <laughs> with 
a bunch of special features. It is a two disc set. Um, this is our first two disc set. Audio commentaries, rare behind the scenes stuff. Uh, it's really, really cool um, that he was able to put this together, but it's a really solid release and Zach has been killing it with our Blu-ray releases. And so finally I wanted to do like some of the really old school stuff, you know, from late eighties and early nineties, uh, uh, the, the early LBP years. And that's where this disc came in and I didn't know what it was going to do. So we, we did a limited release, like I said, 50, 50 copies only. And there are three copies left of this release. Um, but this has from 1994, our Friday the 13th Halloween night mixing Freddie and Michael. I mean, uh, Jason and Michael Myers. And then our From Dust Till Dawn parody from Almost Night Till Almost Day from 96. And that is on here. You know, they were shot on VHS and they're very crude. Um, but I know a lot of the uh, Low Budget Pictures Warlock fans, my, my, the fans of mine, really love going back and seeing some of the older stuff. And that's really perfect. This release is perfect for that. Um, it's got brand new audio commentaries for both films. And I was able to track down um, a bunch of the original members of LBP. And some of these guys I have not talked to in well over 20, 25 years, which is insane. And it was really awesome to talk to them. And their interviews are on here. Their brand new interviews are on here. There's also behind the scenes of us making Friday the 13th Halloween night and a bunch of archival raw footage from like 91 to 96 of stuff that like we didn't finish or just stuff that we were just fooling around with. Um, but, you know, if you're a fan of my uh, my stuff. Uh, this this was the disc to get, I guess, and we've got three copies left. Uh, so I really want to thank you people out there who grabbed this. Um, it, it surprised me that we sold so many and, um, they're $30 ship in the U S if you want to do overseas, you have to talk to me about shipping costs. Cause that's, uh, it's really shitty for, for all you overseas folks nowadays. I mean, the shipping is really getting ridiculous and I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it's not my fault, but, uh, you know, what do you do? Um, but so yeah. I did want to say thank you to all of you folks who have been picking this up. And, um, you know, we might make another run um, down the road, maybe. Uh, maybe for convention exclusives. Uh, who knows? We'll see, since they did so well. Um, I will say that the next uh, old school Blu-ray release that we're putting out is a double feature of the... 2001 flick scrotal vengeance uh and we're coupling it with the 2006 flick the karaoke kid which very few people have seen unless you're like a hardcore lbp fan and happen to have the the bare bones dvd uh, um, screener of it um but uh we are pairing scrotal vengeance and Karaoke Kid, and they will have uh, old extras and new extras. You know, I'm going to be talking to a lot of people involved in those two projects and really what the Karaoke Kid was all about, because uh, there is a, a little bit of a history behind that and why there wasn't uh, an official release of that. Oh, there are a couple of people talking to me. Huh. Uh, Lewis Clark, hi. I think it's great you make your own movies. I'm a big fan of your channel. I'm a huge horror fan. Sending you love from the UK. Thank you, Lewis. Yeah, I wish you could uh, get a chance to see some of my schlock, you know, over there in the UK. But I'm glad you like the channel. Um, and Mosley, oh man, can't wait for that. <laughs> Hello, Mosley. I hope you have been enjoying the uh, the movies. Um, you know, I would love to. Uh, come back and talk to you guys uh, as far as movies are concerned, horror, whatever. Have me on your show again. Uh, I'll talk some stuff. <clears throat> but um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's really all I wanted to say it was a big thank you to those of you who did pick up that release, this new release, Seabage's Fan Film Frights. 
Um, again, I'm uh, I'm really uh, humbled by the fact that uh, other than these three, it's sold out pretty much. Um, so it means a lot. Also, I don't know if you guys who do have this know, but this this logo was lovingly recreated by Zach. But this was the original uh, low budget pictures logo from from 1991, and uh, you know until geez until 2000, uh, and then we had, we got a new logo made. But um, yeah, my my aunt. Uh, was the original person who made that logo for us, and she made shirts up. She made shirts for all of us back then uh, that we would wear, and we proudly wore them uh, when we were first selling at the 1996 Fangoria Weekend of Horrors. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Lewis, loving the house t-shirt. Yes, of course. It's, uh, it's a Beautiful film. I have a, a few house t-shirts. This is from my buddies over at Fright Rags. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's. I mean, that's all I really wanted to say uh, for this. But again, if if you guys wanted to keep talking, I'll gladly keep talking. Um. Uh, you know. You guys have any questions or uh, it's only a couple of you in the in the chat again i didn't you know i knew this this was a spur of the moment thing um i just didn't want to set up a camera and do the whole editing and all of that to to just do a video about thanking you guys about the seabage fan film thing and we only have three left so yeah i like one and two one is my favorite um you know uh Three isn't really a house movie, and four I don't like, <laughs> as cheesy as it is. Um, but one and two, they're... Uh, I, I, Lewis, I do send to the UK. Uh, when people order, I do send it. It's just the, the shipping is so funky. You know, they... Uh, it's just so expensive. Um, and so a lot of people... I mean, we used to have when it wasn't as expensive, we used to have a lot of overseas fans. Um, we'd get orders from Australia and, and um, Germany and, and uh, Switzerland and, and the UK. Um, but because the, because the shipping has become so expensive, uh, we don't get a lot of orders anymore. But as long as people are willing to pay for the shipping, yes, I do ship to the UK. Uh, Mosley, what are the chances of some throwback LBP shirts being for sale one day or current ones? I'd buy both. Uh, well, we have a tea public. Um, it's funny, I don't really promote the tea public that much, and I, I guess I should, but there is a tea public. Um, it's, uh, you know, maybe I'll, here, maybe I'll find it and throw it up in the chat. Um, you know, and when you work with a company like that, you don't really get paid a lot of money. I, I think I get like two bucks a shirt. Um, one of these days, I will sort of, you know, I'll go back and and uh, do it uh, do it ourselves again because um, you know I think it is worth it. But the good thing about T Public is that you are getting full color shirts. Um, and they do it all themselves, and I don't have to worry about that. And they uh, ship it out to you as well, uh, whereas we don't have to worry about that because I'm not a, I am not a company. <laughs> I'm just a guy, and I would rather have somebody do it. Uh, Lewis, yeah, I do agree. House one and two are the best. I don't like three either, but I do enjoy four for what it is. You know. Kane Hodder as a pizza in part four. Uh, let me find the tea public. Um, uh, see if I can get. Uh, 
See if I can find our um, our thingamajig. And everything right now is 35% off on the TeePublic uh, website. So, I mean, that's a good, you know, that's a nice cut for the shirts. Again, we don't get it much, but that's okay. As long as people are walking around with, with LBP or Warlock or something like that on their chests, on the breasts, it's all good. Um, is it under that? How much picture? Let me see. Am I having such a hard time finding our own? Uh... Really? Shit. I can see why nobody is buying anything. Can't find the damn site. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't know. I'm live. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi. I don't know. I just wanted to jump on real quick. And... Oh. Who's listening? I don't know these people. <laughs> <laughs> one of them's from the UK and, and one of them's a big fan. I don't know. I just wanted to talk about these and how we only have a few left. Anyway. Yeah. anyway, okay, guys. So I just, uh, for Mosley, I just put the, the T Public. Uh, it's in there. It's uh, it crept from the 80s. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you can find it. Okay, sorry guys. Let me uh, let me read this. Uh, sick. I'll order it on Monday. Oh. Nasty Nitro. Oh, damn. I might have to order a shirt, too. Hello, Nasty Nitro. Hello. Thank you for popping in. Um, Mosley, best way to make it worth it for you across the pond, Lewis, would probably be to get a bundle when Chris has one going so you can get a buttload of films in one package. That is true. I was going to say, um, you know, it's, it's worth it to not just get one Blu-ray, but to get, like, a bundle of them. Um, uh, just to make the most of that shipping, yes. Uh, Lewis, I'm going to have to go to work early or try to catch up on next live chat and talk more horror. Yeah, Lewis. I mean, again, this was... Thank you for popping in, Lewis. Uh, this was just an impromptu thing. This I didn't let anybody know. We normally do let people know when we're going to do this. I just wanted to pop on and let people know uh, that we only have three copies left of the Seabage Fan Film Frights. On Blu-ray. Um, so, yeah. Um, Kino, will there be any more releases in the future? Yes. Uh, let me just repeat what was going on. I do only have three left of the Seavage fan films. The next release... Uh, for Blu-ray is going to be the double feature of the 2001 Scrotal Vengeance and the 2006 Karaoke Kid. That'll be a double feature Blu-ray um, and we'll be doing brand new special features for that and putting some archival stuff, some raw footage that, again, like Karaoke Kid did not really have a, a solid normal release because of the intentions of what that film was going to be. 
uh, and we will talk all about it on the Blu-ray release of that. Um, and then Scrotal Vengeance, Scrotal Vengeance had like a, I think, a blooper reel in that original DVD. I mean, that original DVD was made like 20 years ago now. Um, and it was just a bare bones, a very, like, barely anything on it. Um, and I stopped selling it. I mean, now I you know, don't even sell any of the DVDs at all anymore. So a lot of those releases are going to get ported over to, to Blu-ray. Uh, and our, and our good buddy, Zach Oliveris is putting all those Blu-rays together for us and he's doing a kick-ass job. Uh, the Gooch, will you be getting the new mummy figure by NECA? Hello, Gooch. Uh, good to see you this evening. Again, thanks. Thank you guys who are talking to me. That's great. Uh, I really didn't think anybody would pop on, so it's nice that people are talking just, you know, just out of the blue. Uh, the Gooch, no, I will not be getting the NECA mummy. I don't like the mummy uh, as a character. Um, I do want to get the Wolfman, though. But, uh, and I want to get the Mego um, Frankenstein from Hammer. I have I, I have the regular Mego Frankenstein, but I have the uh, I have the Peter Cushing Van Helsing Mego. I have the um, Christopher Lee Dracula Mego, and I want to get the Christopher Lee uh, Hammer Frankenstein. I want to get that. Hello, Jello. <laughs> Keep kicking ass, Chris. Thanks, thanks for popping in. Um, Again, if anybody, you know, also, you know, I, I have been really pimping the Seavage fan film frights. Again, we only have three copies of the Blu-rays left. But uh, if people don't have any of the releases, you know, you can always get a hold of me. Uh, the Anal Paprika trilogy on Blu-ray. Bunch of special features. You know, Stoinky Saga Blu-ray. Three shorts bunch of features the warlock home video double feature volume two with happy holidays and dingleberries a bunch of special features blood trim and bloody giblets um double feature bunch of special features evil night uh from 2014 that we did uh tons of special features plus our short film 12 inches of dangling fury is on this um and porn star Marilyn Mason. Uh, and this is a remake of the 1992 Todd Cook shot on video film, Evil Night. The Weirdsies, uh, my 2015 film, is finally on Blu-ray. I'm so happy about that with a bunch of special features. And we're all really proud of the Weirdsies. Um, <laughs> the Blue Cheese Brothers, <laughs> which is a, a ridiculous earnest fan film that we did in 2008 that barely anybody has seen and i mean this you know sometimes i sell the blu-ray sometimes i don't but uh you know i guess that should have been on the fan film frights fan film frights then of course death of lantern one and two the first volume of the warlock home video double features um this one is going to get redone uh because we have a whole bunch more special features that can go on this, and this barely has anything on it. It's it's kind of a shitty release. Um, we we I did it myself. <laughs> it was poorly poorly put together. Um, and then the Death of Lantern the remake uh, with special features um, that we shot in 2016. Uh, so yeah, I mean you can get all that shit from me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm mostly having a hell of a time finding Migo lately. They are always thrash when I find them around here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have to... I mean, those Hammer I had to get from Amazon. I, I couldn't find them in the wild. Uh, the only ones I ever find in the wild are like Star Trek or Candyman. And I don't want the Candyman one. Uh, nasty Night. True. Did you get to relaunch your video collection? If so, where can I get the site sorry if you already said where came on late uh you just go to me my brother um 
just uh, warlockhomevideo at gmail.com. Uh, I just went through what I do sell on Blu-ray uh, and in the Seavage fan film Frights. Two very early nuggets of, of cheese from the from the LBP vaults with brand new special features and raw footage from 91 to 96. Uh, from Almost Night to Almost Day, 1996, and Friday the 13th Halloween Night from 1994. Um, pure cheese. Only three of these left. $30 each for those. Uh, anyway. Um, Mosley. Oh, man. I didn't know about that Blue Cheese Brothers. Going to need to order that. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll see. The Gooch. Is that house shirt of cavity colors or fright rags? Uh, Gooch, it is fright rags. Um, I do have a cavity colors house shirt as well. Um, but with Ben and uh, Ben and Chris Tansky being good friends, I, uh, I always get the goods from fright rags. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I first got Anal Paprika and Carnage for the Destroyer back in 2006. Been a fan ever since. Thank you, Jellio. Did you get that new uh, that new Anal Paprika trilogy Blu-ray? Oof. This with all the special features on there and stuff that nobody has seen, including audition tapes and whatnot. Um, beautiful two-disc set. Uh, fright rags. Yes, fright rags. Fright rags. Uh, how much is the Blue Cheese Brothers? If it's for sale, of course. Yeah, the <laughs> Blue Cheese is fifteen. It's a, whew, it's a stinker. Uh, you know, if you want to see me play Ernest and how he gets out of hell, <laughs> uh, it's something else. Um, see me, me, me. Uh, sweet, you know, you know. Oh, okay. Sweet. Okay, Masters of the 80s. Hello, Masters of the 80s. I'm loving your channel. Um, I wish I could catch your live shows. Um, but, you know, I wish you were closer, Master of the 80s, so we could all hang out. I mean, I wish all of you guys could hang out, really. Uh, you know, all of my friends are scattered around the country. I um, mean, they only come in for if we're doing events or shooting movies. Uh, events like the Gash Bash that I do and where we all hang out and watch movies for five days and shit like that. My cousin Casey is close by. He's like 10 minutes away. But he's, you know, he's got a kid and a wife and he doesn't uh, get to do a lot of stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, it would be great to have a whole bunch of more people around to do crazy shit with hang out and geek out. Uh, the Gooch, have you been keeping up with the Book of Boba Fett? It's an awesome show. Um, I, I have. Um, there's things in it that I like, but for the most part, I haven't been too impressed with it. Um, not as much as the Mandalorian. I mean, this past episode was just a Mandalorian episode, <laughs> so, which was awesome. Um, of course, being a original trilogies fan, trilogy fan, I, um, I appreciate all the post return of the Jedi stuff the most for sure and uh um but i don't know i have found the episodes to be a little wayward um the 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 point of what's happening is is kind of getting stretched out um and it's it's not um flowing as as uh solidly as i would like it to be um, I love Robert Rodriguez, but I feel like these two episodes that he did were the worst of the season so far. Um, so I don't know. I, I felt that the second episode and this fifth episode were the best so far of the Book of Boba Fett. But I'm going to keep watching. I'm hoping that uh, we get uh, two great solid uh, episodes coming up. We shall see. Uh, Mosley, you playing Ernest sounds like it would make my entire year. <laughs> I mean, forget the MCU. Chris needs to make the ECU, Ernest Cinematic Universe, or revive it, rather. I wish. 
Thanks a bunch for convincing me to check out Ghostbusters. Hell yeah. I mean, Ghostbusters Afterlife, my friend. Mm. Comes out Tuesday on 4K Blu-ray, and I am picking that up for shout. But this is this is how dedicated to Ernest I am. Check this out. I have <laughs> the Ernest outfit right here. Uh, it's always the go-to Halloween costume that I want to do, but my wife thinks it's ridiculous. But I love it. And, it's, it's every <laughs> and uh, I love Ernest. And so this is proudly in my closet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, had to, I had to say a f sad farewell to the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Good run, though. 1983 to 2022. Jesus, that's a, that's a hell of a run for that band. But I've been a fan uh, since 1993 of the Boss Tones, and it was a sad day for me. Sad day. Then they called it quits. I'm going to give it easily accessible just in case. Hey, man, you never know when you need to be earnest. <laughs> you know? Uh, Gooch, what's coming up on the channel? Actually, I am uh, editing. Um, Casey and I just shot our first half of 1987. The things we, the movies we love from 1987. Uh, we just shot that, and I am editing it, and it'll probably go up either tonight or tomorrow. Um, and then the second half is our favorite TV shows, music, and toys from 1987. Uh, all the things we love that are celebrating, that's celebrating the 35th anniversary. Um, we also have a 40th anniversary of some some stuff coming up because there's some amazing things in uh uh 82 that happened um including masters of the universe uh et the thing things like that so that's that is coming up um but yeah so you know oh i also have a um there will be a i'm going to show off some more of the house because i haven't yet and i know people like that so i'll be doing some videos of some of the rooms i'm going to do another um uh movie collection video i'm just waiting for a few things to before i redo my uh my shelving for those down in the theater room so i'll be doing that um i am going to be doing a savini centric episode tom savini centric uh episode uh yeah so there's some things coming mosley hoping for some crapster pieces with josh swire eventually um yeah you know josh is always so busy um but i have asked him to do some crapster pieces i mean we did um we did one for the you know uh, the release of the Happy Holidays and, and Dingleberries, which, I mean, you've seen. I'm sure you watched that extra. But, um, yeah, yeah, I think I think a Terror of Blood Fart Lake Crapster Piece episode is imminent, uh, so that will happen. Master of the 80s, fantastic, can't wait for that. Gooch, cool, looking forward to it. Laura. I never get tired of the thing videos i tried to describe it to my daughter recently too young to watch it with me though yeah we showed river the thing my son when he was i don't know what was he 11 maybe 12 
but he really dug it. He was like really into it. He did think it was gross and disgusting, but he was like, you know, really in tune with it. And he had his thoughts of who was the thing. And it was really cool. Um, he's about to be 15 now, but yeah, he really dug it. <laughs> Nasty Nitro. Got my shirt order place. Got to hop off now, but I'll email you in a bit. See what movies I can pick up. Thanks for keeping the dream alive, bud. Thank you, Nasty Nitro. I really appreciate it. Uh, Jello chloride. Hell yeah. Um, again, this is cool. I'm I'm glad I you know some of you folks popped on because <laughs> this was not a a planned live thing. So very fun. What you eating? Uh, that's cool. <laughs> Uh, the Gooch, I'm currently watching Tales from the Dark Side series. What are your thoughts on that series? I, I do like the series. I have the series as well. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's all the people I love doing, you know, low-budget TV. You know, some, some episodes are fantastic and some are terrible. Uh, and they did so many, you know, um, and that's just how it is with a lot of those shows, like monsters or um tales from the crypt or uh freddy's nightmares um you know that type of stuff it's all hit and miss um but i totally watched it and i'm i'm glad i have it on dvd you know mostly it occurs to me that i haven't shown my daughter the thing i'll have to change that tonight <laughs> hey man you know if she can get down with the sickness, then uh, it's all about it. I mean, the thing is a masterpiece. Uh, Jello fluoride. Always a treat, homie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for popping on. I appreciate it. And again, if any of you guys need to get some of these releases, you know, just give me an email. Warlockhomevideo at gmail.com. And if you want those early Seavage fan frights, I've got three left. And they are these are thirty each. Um, and right now these these are uh, this one is twenty five, and the rest are fifteen each. Um, but this one's twenty five. This is a two disc set. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, the Gooch. Man, oh wait, uh, Kino Angel. Man, I have been watching R rated movies since I was in elementary school. Hell yeah, I hear you, me too. You know, those were the days, it's not like that anymore unless you're a cool parent like me. <laughs> um, uh, the Gooch, man, I need to get for Freddy's Nightmares. I have a blue, I have a Blu ray release of the um, Chiller channel. Uh, of all the Freddy's nightmares, um, that's you know, broadcast quality. Uh, but at least I have them, and they don't look all shitty like you had to get them before VHS copies. Uh, Sean, Sean King, what are you doing here? Sean King, everybody, celebrity. Sean King, Sean King is in the chat. Sean Q King is. Uh, uh, a genius as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's a really good dude, a uh, good friend. Um, he helped shoot Death of Lantern, the remake. Um, and he is uh, the co-creator and one of the characters of the legendary <laughs> spook, uh, spook troop, the Gooligan. The Gooligans you can find on Amazon Prime. Uh, really cool spook troop. Um, he's a, a beautiful cinematographer, and um, uh, hopefully he'll be helping us with uh, projects this year. A certain project that I will be talking to some of you hardcore LVP Warlock fans because we're going to need some help. And um, 
I'm going to go directly to the fans for this to, to see if we can get some help for it. But, um, yeah, uh, Mosley, I would love Freddy's Nightmare. Sadly, I think the closet we've got to an closest we've got to an official modern release is a soundtrack deal. Yeah, I did see that soundtrack. Um, I mean, my that the Blu ray set that I have of Freddy's Nightmares is really decent again because they were just taken from the chiller channel back in the day. Um, so they don't look gross and, and scraggly VHS y. Uh, Masters of the 80s. I've just done a live stream about my love of the Muppets uh, and what I have in my collection. Do you own the box sets of the original Muppet show? If so, how many are available in the U.S.? Man, I, I wish I knew that. Uh, I love the Muppets. I love Jim Henson. Um, I've talked about it so much of my love of of that that genius and, and that show. Um, I have what is available uh, for the Muppet show. Um, for some reason, the final seasons are not on DVD here, uh, which is very bizarre. Um, but I'm glad that, uh, you know, Disney Plus put all of them out on their channel so that I can rewatch those. Uh, but yeah, I've got the Muppets. I've got the original Muppet movie. I've got the, you know, Great Muppet Caper. And uh, I'm not a big fan of Muppets Take Manhattan. I love the Muppet Babies. Uh, you know, I, of course, I love Labyrinth and I love the Dark Crystal. And I have the new Muppet movie, the first new Muppet movie. Um, I didn't really like the second one, the sequel, the modern one. Um, I liked the show that they did for uh, ABC years ago. Um, that was like the Parks and Rec. I like that. Yeah, four and five. Is they're not available here for some reason, uh, or they haven't even been made. I don't know. Uh, maybe they are in the UK, but they're not here. Um, <laughs> Meet the Feebles technically counts. <laughs> not really, <laughs> but I do love that film. Do love that film. Uh, has anybody successfully taken Manhattan yet? The Muppets failed. Jason failed. Where is the hero we need? Damn it. <laughs> funny um the original anal paprika three uh that we were gonna do in 2001 was called alfred and john simon mount manhattan manhattan uh so we would have proper properly taken it but uh yeah Oh, and I love Muppets Christmas Carol. That's fucking awesome. But yeah. I've met a lot of the Muppeteers as well. Uh, Steve Whitmire as well. He was awesome to meet. Um, shame what they did to him. I, I, it's hard for me to get behind the new Kermit voice. Uh, Steve Whitmire was a original Muppeteer, um, and he was with them forever, and he did... Uh, you know, Rizzo the Rat and a whole bunch of voices. But when Jim died, Steve Whitmire took over as Kermit. And, you know, even back then, it was a little hard to get into, but eventually I did, and and I liked uh, Steve's performance as Kermit. And then in 2006, they, I mean, 2016, they fired Steve Whitmire, and now they get this other dude, and he, he stoinks as Kermit, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, Mosley. Uh, you know, Muppets Christmas Carol is fucking amazing. And, you know, in 1987, the, the TV movie, uh, A Muppet Family Christmas, is genius. Uh, and I have that. Um, you know, the, the DVD is very rare. You can find it on YouTube, um, but it's, it was like, it blew our little minds, you know, and I was 10 years old in 87 and that special came out and it was a mixing of uh, Jim's everything, you know, Henson's world. So it crossed the Sesame Street and Muppets and it, and it had all of them and, and it was just amazing. It was a great Christmas special. Uh, 
uh, the Gooch. Um, are you looking forward to the new Batman movie? I am. I am. Um, you know, I have a. I have a weird relationship with DC. I, 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 I don't think it's. I guess it's not weird. It's just like I'm not the biggest DC fan, and I haven't been. I mean, since I was a kid, there's certain uh, heroes from the DC world that I sort of latched onto. Um, and then as I got older, I certainly gravitated more towards uh, the Vertigo line of stuff. You know, um, Constantine. I like Hellblazer. I like Watchmen, of course. Um, uh, Swamp Thing. Some of the Swamp Thing run is good. Uh, but out of the main roster, Batman was... I mean, it was basically Batman and The Flash. Those two characters I loved as a kid. And um, I still love to this day. But my Batman... My Batman, uh, as far as like movies are concerned, I have a very specific uh, type of Batman that I like, and they haven't quite touched on that yet. Um, they almost did with the Zack Snyder stuff, um, but I really, ultimately, I was not a fan of that stuff. Uh, my favorite Batman is Michael Keaton. He always will be. <laughs> um, I like my Batman to be uh, still rooted in the comic book fantastical, right? Um, not as far as, and I really, I mean, I have it. I have the incomplete series, and I really enjoyed the 66 Adam West Batman growing up, and I, I love that. Um, and that's what that is. Um, uh, I did not like the Joel Schumacher films at all. Um, even back then I really didn't. I was like, what, what is happening here? Um, but man, do I love Batman 89 and Batman Returns. Um, but what I'm, what I mean is I want my Batman to, to still have that sense of, um, darkness and, and uh, this is a guy who, you know, he created himself to be this this vigilante character. I love all that, but I want, you know, his rogues gallery is ridiculous, and I want that. I, I don't want, I don't need my Batman to constantly be dark and brooding and real life. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, in particular, do not like the Nolan Batman films at all. I love Batman Begins because Batman Begins still felt um, on the edge of fantastical. Uh, but boy, do I not like The Dark Knight, whatever those other movies are from the Nolan. I don't like those. Um because they're just essentially just crime thrillers with a dude in a bat suit. I, you know, people seem to forget that where Batman came from, <laughs> you know, uh, and truth be told, a lot of these fans who are, you know, uh, younger than me uh, saying that that's not how Batman is probably only started reading Batman in the modern age where Batman is more taken more towards seriously in the comic books and shit like that. And, isn't as fantastical, but I like uh, Arkham type. I like the the creatures that Batman can fight that are in that world. I like the more fantastical uh, villains and and things like that. I mean, there's fucking Poison Ivy. There's you know uh, Clayface. You know the Scarecrow. <laughs> all that stuff. Uh, I like that. Uh, and I felt like with I I don't like Zack Snyder's uh whole the way that he does these superhero movies um but his batman was pretty fucking dope and and i wanted to see and i was like okay now we're in a world where dark side is real and there's you know parademons and it's fantastical and batman is fighting that and um in that world and i like that so 
long story <laughs> short, I am looking forward to the Batman. Um, even though it once again sort of uh, looks like it just goes back to, and eh, this dude just puts on an outfit and goes to fight crime, and there's not really anything fantastical happening. So I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Long winded. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Kino Angel. Yeah, I am. Uh, yeah, I am not. Uh, I am not a fan of the Dark Knight at all. Uh, I wasn't when I saw it, uh, and it just wasn't for me. It wasn't. It, you know, but the cool thing is, is that there's different interpretations of Batman throughout the history of Batman, and everybody can have their interpretation. Um, that just wasn't mine, and that's okay. So. Uh, Mirror's Land. They've delivered a lot more of the fantastical stuff in the animated features. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the, I mean, the genius of Batman the animated series is, I mean one of the greatest uh, animated television shows of all time. You know? Out of the, I guess out of the DC movies um, uh, that they've been doing, uh, I liked Shazam. I liked the Batman portion <laughs> in Batman versus Superman. Uh, the rest of the movie I thought was deplorable. Um, I did not like Justice League, either of them. Um, I loved Aquaman. Uh, the, the thing I loved about Aquaman was um, just how uh cheesy and and uh adventure like and it, it was it was just like it was just like a globe trotting uh crazy visual adventure uh and i thought james wan did a great job at just really opening up some crazy shit and showing me the type of adventure that i want from these types of heroes and stuff like that so I'm really looking forward to the Flash because they're gonna, you know, get into the whole Flashpoint thing, and um, I'm a sucker for time travel every single time. I love multiverses on either DC or or Marvel. I'm a Marvel guy. I make mine Marvel 100. percent um, But again, I like Batman. I like the Flash. So I'm really looking forward to that. Of course, I'm looking forward to Michael Keaton coming back as Batman. He's also gonna be in the Batgirl movie, which is awesome like yeah i'm excited for that stuff uh kino angel i don't like the dark knight or the dark knight rises i think that's what it was called either it was mid for me and i didn't like dark knight rises begins was the best and felt the most like a batman movie out of the three 100 percent agree um batman begins i think is a, a tight awesome beautiful film. I really do. Batman Begins. Jello. <laughs> I've seen Matrix Resurrection. I did. <laughs> I didn't like it. But I don't like 2 and 3. Uh, and I don't like The Matrix as much as everybody else does. Um, so when I saw The Matrix in theaters in 99, um, I liked it, but I was not blown away. I didn't come out of the theater like, whoa, you know, uh, it didn't change cinema for me. <laughs> um, and this is for a couple reasons. One, um, I was already a fan of Hong Kong cinema. So I was I had like VHS imports of a whole bunch of amazing wire foo and, and um, wushu films, you know. Uh, so I had seen it and I had seen it done better. Um, the whole like, you know, bullet time and all that stuff, 
people seem to forget, but in the <laughs> in the in the beginning of ninety nine and even like late ninety eight, there were um there were commercials, like TV commercials that had bullet time in it. Um I guess I guess people kind of flipped out because it was bullet time being used in a action motion picture, I guess, but it didn't um it didn't quite catch me the way that it caught everybody else. I was totally entertained and to this day I think the Matrix is really fun. Um uh but I also I went to the theater um in ninety eight and there's a little theater here in Rochester called The Little. And they played um Dark City. And man that I love Dark City. I love it to this day. Um that director's cut on Blu-ray is is awesome. And uh so when I was watching The Matrix, I remember my girlfriend at the time, uh we kind of looked at each other and we were like, this is kind of like Dark City uh in a in a way. Um but I felt Dark City was doing it better. So again, long-winded, that's my take on The Matrix. Um the Matrix Resurrections, I did not like. I, uh, uh, you know, I watched it with my wife and my cousin Casey and his wife, and we all kind of like, we all kind of, I guess, laughed at it. We were laughing most of the time. Just, um, I don't know. We, we were not fans. Long-winded. Sorry. We need a new Howard the Duck movie. I'd trade several of the ones we've got for more Howard. <laughs> I love the original Howard the Duck, but I was, you know, I was of the age at the time, you know. I was nine years old when Howard the Duck came out. It worked for me. It was a fucking HBO staple. It was on all the time. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I'm a proud owner of Howard the Duck on Blu-ray. I can't believe it came out on 4K. I, I'm not going to get the 4K of Howard the Duck, but uh, but I really enjoyed it. Um Modern Howard the Duck, I think, would be fun uh, with what it was, what it's been established now in the MCU. I guess. And man, all I all I want is more Superman in the DC Cinematic Universe. Kino Angel. So Superman um, has always been uh, like one of my least favorite characters ever, um, and only because like he's Superman. I mean, he's afraid of green rocks. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it you know, I, I like what he stands for, and I, boy, do I love the original Richard Donner film and the sequel. I love those two films. I think they're magnificent. Um, and I love uh, Henry Cavill as as Superman. You know, there were things in Man of Steel that I was like, oh my god, finally. Finally, they're doing this with Superman, um, which is showing fucking Superman's powers, you know, showing what this guy can do. Uh, and I always felt like they just kept dropping the ball with that. Um, and then they gave us that. But I also, Superman should not be as dark and brooding as they were making him out to be. Um, uh, I would gladly watch another Superman movie with Henry Cavill. If it wasn't directed by Zack Snyder, yeah. so we'll see. And I don't hate Zack Snyder. Um, I love The Watchmen. I love uh, Three Hundred. I even love um, Sucker Punch, which most people hate, but I really love that movie. Uh, I just think he should just stay away from superheroes. Uh, that's all. I didn't discover dope whoosh films until a bit later. I was still a wee lad back in 99. Where, where, yeah, I was, you know, geez, what was I? I was, uh, I was 22, 99. Um, but I was the, uh, I was importing a whole bunch of um, VHS. There were like all these awesome catalogs back in the day. One was called Catalog of Carnage. Uh, there was Film Threat Catalog. Um, uh, there was another one that I got all the time, but they had all these amazing imports. So in the early 90s, I was, you know, just 
mail ordering all these uh, you know gross anime and and uh, uh violent films like that and i was getting a whole bunch of imports uh uncut stuff um and i was really into that stuff so that's you know that's why i was able to see all that stuff it definitely wasn't you know they barely rented that stuff in the mom and pop video stores i love howard too i have the 101 film special edition nice release awesome yes the downer cut is awesome uh you know superman is my favorite yeah i remember seeing geek war and <laughs> yeah that's that's my dialogue uh yeah i mean that whole exchange in geek war is my my thoughts on all of that you know um blue beetle and <laughs> all that stuff I was, uh, you know, and it's funny, the, the guy who's playing the lead guy in, in Geek War, uh, Kurt, he's a big DC fan. So I kept like, I really was pouring it on, uh, each, you know, each time I was like changing the, the script for that and writing my thoughts as far as DC and Marvel were concerned. And he was, uh, <laughs> he was none too pleased, but. It was fine. It was all, all in good fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh, this is good, guys. I'm uh, quite happy we, we're talking. Was, what, what a nice surprise to yap with you guys. Mosley, that's... um. Really looking forward to the day we get a Geek War Blu-ray. Uh, you know, uh, again, that's uh, that's all SRS. Uh, they own um, you know they own the rights to like eight or nine of my films, and unfortunately, I, I have tried to buy some of the rights back and he doesn't want to even though he's not doing shit with those titles anymore um he seems to be focused on some of the lowest common denominator garbage out there and he just keeps pumping that shit out uh i don't know if we will you know i mean that blu-ray release he did of sex watch and sex watch 2 i mean he it was so fast. He did it and then it was gone and then he didn't do it again. Um, I'm glad I, you know, I have to bootleg my own film, uh, ooh, my own <laughs> double feature to do that shit. Um, but, you know, I've asked like, hey, you know, are we ever going to get good releases of, of my films? Like it did so well for Makeflix and J.R. Bookwalter and Tempe and us uh, when you know, JR decided to re-release um, the whole LBP Tempe catalog on Blu-ray and everything. It did so well, and I was so happy to be a part of that. And, um, you know, but SRS beats the fuck out of me. I mean, those, uh, I don't know what Ron thinks sometimes. It's a, it's a bummer, <laughs> you know, and, and I've said before, like, um, you know, it's, uh, they don't, I mean, he doesn't properly put the aspect ratios of what the films were shot on, onto the DVD. Um, he, he has ruined so many of our releases that way. Um, we've given him special features and he hasn't put those special features on the discs. He'll put some, but others he doesn't put on. It's very bizarre. I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, I like Ron a lot, and he, uh, most of the time that we made movies for SRS, um, it was, it was good. You know, it was pretty good. Um, near the end, it wasn't. Um, and his sort of views on, on stuff nowadays is totally not my cup of tea at all. Um, so 
So, but it is a shame. You know, I, it would be nice to sort of, especially because he isn't selling any of those movies anymore. I mean, I'm shocked that he finally did something with Deathbone. I mean, we made Deathbone in 2008, and he didn't really do anything to it with it until recently. And he didn't even put like any of the special features that we had or anything like that. <laughs> so I don't know, man. Ah, well, what do you do? Uh, I, I I really don't understand why he won't sell the rights back to me. I I really don't. Um, especially because he's just sitting on them. He's not doing anything with them anymore. So what do you do? Any more questions, quists? Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? Things are on the horizon. <laughs> that would be so fucking stupid, but something that I could see him doing. Yeah. Uh, Jello. Uh, have you seen the film Pontypool? Uh, I did a while ago and wasn't a wasn't a fan. I didn't uh, didn't do anything for me. Uh, Masters of the Eighties, if any, what's your thought on the Blu-ray release of Chippendale? Let's do. Um, I I didn't watch it. Um, of course I was aware of it, but I I just didn't watch it. It wasn't um it wasn't a, a thing that I enjoyed. Um. I think we'll get it because my wife is a huge Rescue Rangers fan. Um, but, uh, yeah. I mean, the the one show that I watched was DuckTales. You know, that started in 86. Um, Full-blown in 87. But I didn't, um, yeah, I, don't, I didn't like any of the other stuff. Like uh, Darkwing Duck or Tailspin or any of that stuff. I didn't watch it. And, you know, truth be told, I, I really, I'm not the biggest Disney guy uh, as far as the Disney animated stuff is concerned. When I was very little, I loved it. And um, I used to, I drew a lot and I, you know, drew my own comic books, but I started drawing at age four and all the stuff that I was drawing was Disney characters and stuff like that. Um, but as I got older, you know, I just, I didn't get into it. I'm, I'm not even a Pixar guy, really. Uh, it's very, I'm very particular about certain things. And, um, you know, uh, there's maybe, I can count on one hand the films that I like from Disney and Pixar. You know, so. Boy, do I love Disney World. I'll tell you what, Disneyland and Disney World, the parks, hell yeah. Mm. Good times. Uh, quick question, Kino. When will you ship the Seabage fan film Frights? Is it still fifth? Oh, no. Kino, I've been... They're out. I mean, that's why I only have three left. I only have three of these left. Uh, as soon as I got them in, uh, I started shipping them out. Uh, this, is, this is what I have left. I have three copies. That's it. Um, so... They've already been shipped out, brother. Mosley already has his. Oh, oh. Kino. Okay, I know who you are now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know the game. You know how it is when I've been shipping to, to you. Uh, how long it usually takes. Um, but uh, yeah, you'll get it. Don't worry. You will get it. And if, and if it doesn't show up, just get back to me. Sorry, I thought I had sent, look, look at this. I thought I had sent the uh So this is the 
the these were the trackings and because I was doing so much and all of them basically at once I did not send info to everybody so I am so sorry Kino but yeah there you go Uh, Master of the 80s, I, I also like gummy bears, but I didn't count gubby, gu, uh, gummy bears into that Saturday afternoon thing. Um, I mean, uh, daily afternoon thing, because gummy bears was a Saturday afternoon cartoon. I mean, Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, so I did watch gummy bears. Um, so Gummy bears is actually, uh, it was on my wish, Amazon wish list for a long time. Um, so yeah, I, I did like gummy uh, do, 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 do. Jello, will you be dropping by the next Cinema Wasteland? Uh, were you there at the one I was just at, Jello? Um, we did Cinema Wasteland uh, in October, and it was awesome. Man, it was great. Uh, what a what a good time. Um, and it was nice to be back. You know, I hadn't gone to Cinema Wasteland in like six years, and to come back. And to have a table again and to be welcomed as well as we were and i mean we sold so much stuff it was great um uh but no i, I i'm not gonna be at the april one uh i don't think uh the next convention i'm gonna be at but i won't be selling but i'll be at is the uh monster mania in uh cherry hill new jersey um I'm not sure what we're going to be selling at because we we've got stuff uh there's shooting that's going to be taking place uh which I will be talking to hardcore fans about to sort of help us help us with that um things might be moving forward well things are moving forward with Wellsville Knights so um which is my next project so but we're going to need a budget for that first for the pilot and um Hopefully, uh, you hardcore fans will help us uh, get where we need to be for that. Um, and if anyone is interested in, in finding out how they can help us for Wellsville Knights, they can get a hold of me at warlockhomevideo at gmail.com. Um, but I will be sending out like a specific video that Casey and I uh, shot, uh, sort of letting everybody know what the project is and uh only certain people will be getting the the video um so we'll see jim van brunt uh mosley if i live closer he could ship it to me and i could snug smuggle it under the fence to you so we could watch it together <laughs> be a badass vacation oh jello i missed it um mostly i will definitely help however i can can't wait to hear those details master of the 80s when do you plan on doing your next saturday morning sleepover i just did one um in january oh wait we're still in january i just did <laughs> i just did a saturday morning sleepover um i've been doing it now for five years which is awesome uh i don't i don't know how many times i've done it uh but i know it's this was the fifth year starting um yeah there'll be more you know um i haven't quite figured out how we would do like a uh you know a saturday morning sleepover live thing so other people could join in um but i am going to be doing a um a fan uh a fan saturday morning sleepover where if people want to if fans of the movies or the channel want to, then they can come out um, and join in on the Saturday morning sleepover. Um, we'll probably do like, you know, maybe maybe two to three fans for that that can come out. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. But, you know. fun time it's a real fun time uh, 
Uh, I got to pick my kid up. Sorry to bail early. Thanks for the stream, though. It was awesome to hear from you. Cool, Mosley. Thank you for popping in. Uh, again, this was cool. I appreciate everyone sort of uh, sticking around and talking with me. Um, I mean, I'll still talk a little bit longer if you want to. Uh, otherwise, we can split. I don't know. Whatever uh, it is up, whatever you guys feel. If you want to keep uh, rapping. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions about ordering anything um, or helping out with Wellsville Knights, um, and wanting that info, you can just write me at warlockhomevideo at gmail.com. And I will give all the info for that. Um, and again, I haven't really let people know, but, um, you know, we do have that, uh, that tea public, it crept from the eighties. Um, with shirts and stickers and all that stuff from from LBP, Warlock, and it crept from the 80s. Um, uh, my favorite John Carpenter movie is The Thing. Um, he is my favorite uh, horror film director. Love The Thing. Love The Fog. Big The Fog fan. Um, I love Big Trouble. You know, I love They Live. I really love In the Mouth of Madness. Um, but my favorite uh, has always been The Thing. Yeah, The Fog is... Whew. I watch it every April. Fog Day. On Fog Day. Jimmy Van Brunt, Jimmy Van Brunt. Uh, you know, Chris, really interested in the pilot for the show. Thank you. Thank you, Keto. Thank you. What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Hungry, huh? You're hungry, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, guys. I'm going to split, uh, but thank you for popping in. This was awesome, uh, unexpected, nice. Uh, I'm going to go try to feed my son and feed myself. And, um, yeah, if you're interested in, we only have three left, if you're interested in those or interested in my other movies, interested in helping out with Wellsville Knights, Get a hold of me at warlockhomevideo at gmail.com. And I thank you guys so much for popping in. Again, unexpected. It was nice of you to come and talk to me. Uh, next time I'll announce it so everyone can know when we're going to do it. Um, but hope you all have a great uh, night. Wherever you are, stay he healthy, stay happy, and uh, let's taste each other another day, shall we? Mm -hmm. Bye! <laughs>